Good morning, everybody, and thank you for this opportunity to present to you this morning. I'm hoping by the end of this presentation that you will walk away with a little more knowledge and understanding about HF Communications and some of the exciting work I believe we're doing at Rotec Communications in this space. So to talk to the theme of this conference, I thought it would be appropriate to discuss some of the history of HF Data Communications and then walk you through uh, some of the exciting innovations that are taking place at Rotec Communications and in South Africa at large. Uh, and, and really sort of pushing the frontiers of, of, of what's possible uh, in this area. So what I plan to do, I've got a 15 minute slot to, to talk to you this morning, just very briefly touch over who uh, Reuters Communications is, what we're all about. Uh, and for those of you that aren't in the know about HF Communications, I'll very briefly touch on what, what that is as well. And then speaking to the theme of the conference, to, to, to dive into why I believe, or we believe, HF Communications is a foundational technology for maritime security and a, a relevant topic for this, for this conference today. And then, and then finally, the meat of the, the, of the talk will be looking at some of the uh, enhancements and, and uh, improvements that, that are taking place in, in, the, in this area, making it all the more relevant for a uh, modern Navy uh, going forward. Okay, so. Reuters Communications is a privately owned company founded in 1968, so we're 54 years old already. Uh, we've an original equipment manufacturer, or OEM, of tactical uh, radio equipment that spans everything from airborne to naval to ground-based platforms, man portable, etc. So our production facility is and headquarters are based in uh, New Germany, just outside Durban. Uh, that's us in a nutshell. In terms of HF communications, what is HF communications? Well, HF communications is dates, it's not a new technology. So, so I guess that maybe might be the first statement you might make, why is this relevant for maritime security? It's, it's actually a very old technology. It's called um, high frequency communications from the era when HA actually meant it was sort of uh, leading edge. It sort of gives you an idea of how old it is. So it's uh, a communications that covers the frequency band three megahertz to 30 megahertz. But although it's a very old technology, it has some very unique characteristics which makes it relevant. It is the only mode of communications, barring satellite communications, which gives you a beyond line of sight communications capability, which, which uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, is a, a very significant capability. That's to do with the physics of the ionosphere and the propagation, which, which I won't go into today. But uh, for those of you interested, there's, there's, there's lots of interesting things to read up on. So with HF communications, what you fundamentally get is a ship-to-shore or a ship-to-ship -ship or even a shore-to-ship communications capability where the ship could be almost, could be thousands of kilometers uh, in terms of the distance between the transmitters, the ship to the shore. So, so in certain applications, this gives you a, a really powerful capability of, of communications where you don't need uh, satellite communications, for example, whether it maybe is prohibitive or uh, it could be prone to failure. So why is it useful? Uh, it's a fundamental capability of uh, military strategic communications. It's one of the backbones of strategic military communications because it is independent of infrastructure. That's one of the main reasons why it's never going to go away. You can't, you can't, it's very hard to jam and disrupt turn it off, you're in control of it. So being foundational for strategic comms, of course it's, it's one of the key capabilities a Navy has in terms of their communications. And if the Navy is using it, therefore it's relevant to maritime security and hence this conference. And I'll talk about going forward in terms of HF communications, some of the, the renaissance almost you could say in, in, in HF data communications that's coming up now. So, so as I just stated, HF Communications is, is supports the South African navies or any navy at large's long-range communications requirements. So in that sense, I don't believe it's even a debatable topic. Uh, is, it, is it relevant or important to maritime security? Communications is one of these foundational requirements, as I've, I've put in the, in the slide pack there. So to support command and control, own force position awareness, intelligence, you know, safety, uh, basically, in order to conduct the business that the Navy conducts, it needs a command and control or communications capability. So, in terms of 
modern day South African Navy context, uh, a couple of radio sites put down in South Africa, which we, well, which we do indeed have, provides blanket coverage of our exclusive economic zone uh, and beyond, of course, for our blue water operations. So supporting, um, you know, anti-piracy and, and all, all, the, all the jobs that our, our, our sailors do. So another interesting point to mention, I just did briefly touch on it, is that this is a sovereign capability. So for a Navy that operates HF communications, they own the infrastructure. They own, they have end-to-end -end control of the medium and the data. So if you think about it in terms of comparing it to, say, a satellite communications where it might not be your satellite or you have recurring fees, it's an interesting proposition um, in terms of, of, of communication solution. So that's why I believe it's, it's, it's uh, relevant to talk about in this conference. And um, the, the, the heart of the presentation is, in effect, talking about where HF data communications in particular are going and why that's relevant to maritime security. So just have to quickly go back uh, in time a bit, just again sort of paint a picture. Uh, if you think about the Titanic sinking in 1912, just to re again reiterate, this isn't in principle a new technology, but you can think about even back more than 100 years ago, people using this type of communications to radio for assistance under emergency, con uh, emergency situations. So up to now, HF data communications, I would put it to you, has been very challenging. Perhaps if you have a, you know, endless, in our context, if we think of a, a, a Western kind of budget where there's sort of no limits to how you can put down a system, maybe you could argue you can get a, a very, a, you know, a system that works to, to a certain degree. But fundamentally, HF communications, even outside of data, is a difficult communications medium. You need a Skilled operators, they need to know what frequency to use, over which antennas. And this is a function of time of day and uh, relative geographic position because of all the complexities around the propagation. So if you think about people communicating under very poor signal-to-noise ratios, almost having to resort to Morse code, this is people's perception of HF communications, even with voice, which you would think is a bit simpler. So deploying or utilizing data on this medium you know, we almost think of it as a bit of a black art to make it work reliably where you can get it working under, um, you know, 24-7 kind of conditions. Uh, uh, there's a little little breakout box in my slide there showing you that one of the earliest naval uh, data link standards, Link 11, actually, the standard was actually approved in 1957. So, so as I say, this is not fundamentally a new technology, but one that up to today we believe has been very difficult to put into practice. And Navy's find it difficult, I believe, have not fully utilized the HF spectrum up to, this, up to today. So where is HF data communications going? So this, this is, in, in, in my view, almost a bit of a good news story for the, for the conference to explain to you some of the exciting boundaries that are being pushed in terms of HF data communications and indeed in South Africa with South African engineers. So although the medium and, 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 and the spectrum hasn't changed over, say, 100 years, what has evolved immensely is, is the leveraging of modern digital techniques to communicate, all the communications theory breakthroughs that have happened over the last few decades. So the innovation in terms of HF communications hasn't stopped. So where we are today is with these very advanced waveforms is you almost have a WhatsApp text chat type use, you know, capability over HF where we have demonstrated this to work over extended months, you know, with, with uh, f multiple ships communicating to demonstrate that actually this is sort of ready for prime time and data on HF works. It's not something that works sometimes or in some areas at certain times of the day. We believe now in terms of the innovation that's taken place that we've got something that does indeed work. And, and one of the sort of frontiers of, of the technology where we pushing the boundaries in terms of HF communications is beyond now merely the waveforms and the communications techniques, but sort of one lev level up in the, in the uh, hierarchy, I guess you could think of it as looking at network-based communications. So no longer point-to-point -point communications as traditionally been done, where you might be uh, trans transmitting from Cape Town to a ship uh, somewhere up the west coast, and, and the comms going backwards and forwards. But what we believe is possible now for immense system gain 
is, is utilizing a network of receivers on the shore side to, to augment the reception capability of these weak signals coming back from the ship. And then if you couple that with these advanced waveforms and a, a means to automatically select the best shore station, what we've found in, in recent tests is an ability to move away from this requirement of very capital in, ex, uh, intensive or expensive uh, uh, power amplifiers of the, you know, just, just for, the, for the uninformed, you know, typically you, to design a system like this, you would put down 10 kilowatt or five kilowatt, very high power transmitters that are extremely expensive uh, capital equipment. So what we've demonstrated is that you can actually move away from that approach by rather going to a sort of network approach on the, on the shore side um, and, and do in fact much better with, at, a, at a lower price point. So, so that's, that in a nutshell, I guess, is the message from me today is that there's some innovative work taking place in, in this country in terms of HF data communications. Okay. I assume I'm, I'm, am I wrapping up? You're coming close to me. Okay. So, so, so just to, this is my last slide. So, so just to give you a sense of what we're doing, we're combining world-class waveform technology this cutting-edge network, networking approach to, to communications and uh, demonstrating a sort of 24-7 data communications capability. And we've actually trialled this with the Foreign Navy in the Southeast Asia area where we've demonstrated this over a three-month period. And in fact, we, we, we've, we've won business over there up against European competitors, against the best in the world, simply because we've demonstrated the most cost-effective, highest-performing solution. By the way, we have actually proposed this to the South African Navy, so we obviously we be eagerly interested in their feedback if they think this is something they, they might want to use. So, so in summary, uh, I've presented a little story about HF data communications. I hope you found it interesting and you know a little bit more about HF comms and how it's relevant to maritime security and some of the interesting innovations taking place in South Africa that's done by South African engineers. So we have an indigenous solution. Uh, it's world class and importantly designed to be compatible with existing and forthcoming infrastructure. So with those sorts of sensibilities in mind. Okay, and that concludes my presentation.